Oh, come on! Welcome back to the Atari Flashback Classics Review. You're watching the Broken Controller Club. My name is Ed. I think I called it the Atari Flashback Collection last time around. I'm going to play the same difference card to excuse myself of my mistake. Today we're reviewing the next set of Atari games from this collection and they're all cartridge based. You can skip ahead to each game by checking the chapters in the video or in the description. If you haven't already, subscribe to get notified of the next part of this series. Or don't. I'm not your fucking mom. And we are starting this party off with the craziest, most outrageous game ever. And that's 3D Tic-Tac-Toe. I can't even keep a straight face as I'm saying that. It's Tic-Tac-Toe and it's on four planes. You can do it the OG way and connect them in a straight line or diagonally, or you can connect one on each plane making a line. This is for people who probably had a new console and just wanted anything to have in their library and didn't care how stupid it was. Like people who bought Tarzan Untamed with the GameCube when it launched. Air Sea Battle is up next and it's basically target shooting. You have your little, well, I think it's supposed to be a mortar or a cannon, but I won't say what it actually looks like, but you know, use your imagination. You shoot targets with it. You'll play against the computer in one player mode or against another player in two player. First to 15 points wins. It's about as exciting as it looks. You've got your choice of like 20 different variations of the same game also. Of these variations, the only thing that really changes is what you're shooting at. Do you like planes more? Or maybe you'd rather shoot subs or other ships. Or maybe some ducks and goofy looking faces. It doesn't matter because you're doing the same thing over and over again. The CPU will shoot at the exact same rate of fire through the whole game as well, meaning that it's either going to hit a target perfectly without giving you a chance to hit it at all yourself, or it'll miss every single time and you'll have all day to try and perfect your shot and score. Next. Backgammon is a game that I only learned how to play one time, and it's because my wife had to coach me on every step of it like I'm an idiot because I just didn't understand it. Also because I actually am an idiot. I'd rather play the real board game, honestly. I mean, look at this. This looks awful. W would you play it? Next. Time for little hoops. In basketball, you'll guide your player with freakishly large knees around the court to try and land the ball in the hoop. You'll do things like pass the ball to yourself or stand in one place while the CPU player runs around like a moron around the court. To the game's credit, these guys still play basketball better than I ever have in my life. They're also not woke. Next. Okay, now this is barely a game. Even back then you'd have more fun with a pack of cards than play blackjack on your Atari. Or get one of those little LCD games with blackjack on it. I think those might have been around back then. As you can see though, there's not really any pictures or anything up there at all. It's just some numbers on the screen. If your friends lost a bet, see what I did there, and have to play with you, then you can have up to three players joining in on the fun all at once. That's, it's a joke, because it's not fun. I didn't like this. Next, Atari Bowling. Not as fun as Wii Bowling, but not as frustrating as real bowling either. The good news here is that any of these types of bowling, no matter what you like, can be enjoyed with pitchers of beer and nachos. The bad news is that I'm having none of these right now as I play this. You play as an adult Charlie Brown and you hit a button to scoot the ball down the lane and hit the, I guess they're pins, they kind of just look like little dots. Being that this game was while Carter was still president, physics are non-existent in this, but you can hit the directional pad up or down while the ball is in motion to put a spin on it. If you get a spare, the game whistles at you and makes you feel sexy. I never got a strike because I'm not totally sure it's even possible. Pass on this one. In Canyon Bomber, you're bombing canyons. And that's basically it. Like you and the other player are each flying over a canyon and you hit the button to drop a hot load and you score by hitting as many of these colored layers on the way down as you can. Full disclosure, I tried bombing the other plane a few times and it didn't work. I was really disappointed in that. Also, every wave you'll change vehicles and you'll be a jet one minute to a little helicopter to what looks like a little biplane. This has a little bit more going on, but the biggest problem I had was the sound. You hear that? It's not great. Woo, boy, this version of Centipede is certainly the ugly cousin of the arcade version. And of course that makes sense because home consoles just didn't have the power to come close to the arcade machines back then. That said, all the important things are here, and that's the core gameplay, and the sound is reasonably close to. The game is still fun, and I found this one to be easier than the arcade version, so as I was playing this, I didn't feel nearly as incompetent as I did earlier. The arcade version is still better, but if I was a kid with an Atari, I totally would have picked this up for practice so I could impress my buddies at the arcade. 
Circus Atari is a breakout sort of game, or Arkanoid if you're familiar with that. This is where you have a stick man in a seesaw and then the other stick man jumps onto the seesaw and your goal is to destroy as many of the squares at the top as you can. You'll have to switch the orientation of the seesaw to keep this going and when one of the guys hits a brick, there's almost no telling where he's going to go. He might shoot straight down or he might hang out up in the air and break a ton of these squares while he's up there. Then he'll come down, you'll probably miss him and he'll break his spine in addition to whatever other concussions or other broken bones he gets from hitting things with his head and face. If he lives through this, he'll probably end up looking like Mickey Rourke. Next. Combat 1 and 2 are both tank combat games that require two players. You basically pilot your little tanks toward each other, and then whoever blasts the other one first wins. I talked my daughter into playing these with me, and we actually had a really good time. Oddly enough, Combat 1 has more options than Combat 2, and you can use planes and jets instead of tanks if you want. The tanks themselves control like the original Resident Evil games on PlayStation, and I got a laugh out of that. Just, I don't know, it felt like nostalgia or something. This is a good time if you have a friend or kid to play with, though. Okay, so this is the coolest of the cartridge games. In Desert Falcon, you play this falcon that has to collect hieroglyphics and either shoot or avoid enemies while getting through the level. You can walk around on your little bird legs, or you fly for a boost of speed and you can avoid ground-based enemies that way, too. Getting enough hieroglyphics gets you to a boss fight with the Sphinx, and graphically, that thing is more detailed than anything I've seen so far. I was pretty impressed with this one. I was starting to think everything was just blobs and stick figures, and then they roll out a Sphinx. Someone tell Kevin Feige that this is how you subvert expectations. With a name like Dodgem, I thought it might be about avoiding ugly chicks in the club who think you might have money, but it's actually a sort of racing game. It's like if someone made a game of chicken, or a game out of avoiding that person at the grocery store who walks in all the same aisles as you that you secretly hate more and more as you see them. You have to collect the lines, it's kind of like Pac-Man. You collect them in each lane while avoiding the other race car, and it becomes irritating after a bit because the other car seems to know which lane you'll be in every single time. Also, you have to hit the directional button to change lanes well before you get to the opening or else it won't register and you'll stay in that lane. I don't know why they give you lives in this either, because your progress is reset every single time you die. You can also hit the gas pedal to speed up, which may or may not result in hitting the other car. People who drive Mustangs, F-150s, or Challengers will be familiar with this style of driving, and they all live in Tampa. Screw this game. Next. Next up, we've got Fatal Run, which is a racing game where you have to make it to the end of each level without wrecking your car. Graphically, this is better than anything I'd played so far, even Desert Falcon, and I like doing some actual racing for a change instead of awful sports games or going through mazes. At the end of each level, the game passive-aggressively tells you that your speed has saved most of the people, and then you get to refuel and restore your armor and so on. Hitting the fire button shoots your machine guns, but you only know this by the sound because you don't actually see anything shooting out, but the cars that get in front of you do blow up. The game over music rocks out pretty hard too. Football is a super watered down version of the real thing, just like the other sports games on Atari. If you're expecting the updated HD grass physics and microtransactions of the Madden games, then you're going to have to look elsewhere. In this one, you don't even have downs. You just take turns seeing who can score first. I was able to get an interception off my daughter, and we realized that instead of throwing a pass, it was easier to just run the ball in with the quarterback. We had fun, but really the game is crap. And friends, that is it for part two. We've got part three on the way though, and in that one we've got Pong Sports, a human cannonball game, and some other games I'd rather set myself on fire to than play again. See you next time. Congratulations! You're one of an elite few to make it to the end of the video. Reward yourself by hitting the round subscribe button in the middle, and then check out the other goodies I've got in the links next to it.